talking. Okay. Hi, my name is Hannah Mays, and I conducted research over women's sports in the media. For a little bit of a background, women make up for about 50.8% of the world population, out of 7.9 billion, according to the World Bank, an international development organization owned by 187 countries. With this in mind, according to Todd Datch, Chief Communications Officer for Harvard University, 73% of women reported to have played a sport sometime in their lifetime. Um, with this information, it can be concluded that women, the women's athletic community is substantial. Although this information is proven to be true, women still suffer from a lack of coverage in the mainstream media. The media shapes the public's perceptions of ath athletes based on accomplishments and performance, especially women. This leads me to my overarching question, in what ways does the media influence gender inequalities in sports? According to George B. Cunningham, a prof professor and senior assistant for graduate and professional studies at Texas A&M, past research of both public and private media has demonstrated that coverage of women's sports is substantially less than that of men's. And according to Marie Hardin, professor for journalism at Penn State University and Jennifer D. Greer, head of faculty at the University of Kentucky and doctor of philosophy, sports media generally dictates only, f dedicates only 5% to 8% of coverage to women's sports, even though 40% of sports participa participation is by women. This is proven in the graph that shows televised news highlights, online newsletters, and social, social media coverage by gender. The first bar, which shows televised coverage, shows that 91% goes to men, whereas a combined 9% goes to women and neutral. The second bar, labeled online, shows 85.7% media coverage goes to men, whereas a combined 14.3% goes to neutral and women. The last bar, which represents Twitter, shows a similar pattern to the other two, thus indicating a large portion of mainstream media coverage goes to men's sports. The graph overall shows that the neutral percentages are greater than women's percentages in two areas, Twitter and online. Twitter, like many other social media platforms, is very popular amongst the newer generations, which is why it has its own bar in the graph. According to H. Tankowska, a globally known research expert, states that in the, in the past year, 2020, social media had about 3.6 billion users, a number that is projected to be 4.4 by the year 2025. As shown in the graph, now more than ever, well, as shown in the graph, now more than ever, awareness for women's sports is shared through tons of social media platforms. However, this does not mean it's satisfactory. Through a different study by Hardin and Greer, media coverage also creates a more manly feel to sports such as basketball, ice hockey, football, and weightlifting, while there is a more womanly feel to sports, sports such as figure skating and gymnastics. This statement can be proven through a recent incident on TikTok, the most popular app of 2020, and now the beginning of 2021. TikTok is a fairly new social media app, but it has racked up about 33 million downloads. Through her platform on TikTok as a Division I basketball player, Sedona Prince has expressed her time playing in March Madness, March Madness being an NCAA basketball tournament. In her most popular TikTok, Prince shows the differences in the men's weight room and the women's weight room shown here. The men's weight room is on the left and the women's being on the right. Women like Prince speaking out about problems such as this sparks a lot of concerns and for the need of change, especially much greater associations than the NCAA, like the Olympics. According to the United States Soccer Federation, or USSF, the official governing body of the sports of soccer in the United States, the, the women's soccer team has generated more revenue than the men's team for the past three cycles. Abigail Hess, a multimedia reporter, proves this statement through her research. She concludes, in 2016, the women's soccer team generated approximately $50.8 million in revenue compared to the $49.9 million for the men's games. That's a $1.9 million difference. Hess also reported through her studies that the 2000, 2019 women's soccer team had approximately 14.3 million viewers as U.S. viewers tuned into the final match compared to the 11.4 million for the 2018 Men's World Cup final, which is a 22% viewership boost, not including the enormous 20 million streaming, streaming viewers. The graphs displayed also show this comparison. In the left graph, we can see that in the years 2000 to 2015, women have almost completely dominated the men's in ratings, the men's team in ratings. In the graph on the right, in every circumstance, from individual player pay to World Cup bonuses, men get paid a significant amount more than the women do. Though there's a clear link between fans and the media and the amount of money that should be brought in by each team, the women's soccer players are still paid less than the men's soccer players. The wage gap is mostly acknowledged in the Olympics, Olympics simply because they're very much in the public eye. However, there's a huge median of women athletes 
that experience the wage gap because of the opposite of women's soccer, an inadequate amount of representation in the mainstream media. So what can be done? My first solution is to create more projects that are aimed at helping young women in sports, such as One Win Leads to Another, or OWLA, as discussed in Empowering Women Through Sport. OWLA provides young women with the life skills to be strong, compassionate, and brave through sports practice. It is worth considering, though, that only a certain group of women can be targeted through these organizations, since as women get older, their disinterest in sports becomes greater. However, if more projects like OWLA are created, young women will be prepared to face inevitable hardships when playing sports. Closing the wage gap in a more timely manner is another solution, as the wage gap is expected to be closed in 38 years. Perhaps if the wage gap were to be closed, it may result in less funding towards women-only spending, such as maternity leave, free birth control, etc. Nonetheless, this will change the way that young women view the work industry and promote following through in their sport, despite the limitations. Lastly, having more female athletes in the media is a great solution to the problem at hand. For example, Serena Williams is an individual is an ideal individual to campaign with. Campaign with Nike, a $215.4 billion industry, has partnered with Williams in their aim at getting rid of dismissive descriptions of female athletes. Doing so may create an undermining look at men, which wouldn't really be the goal since it would demote them and the goal is for sports to be equal between both sexes. Although this may be true, implementing this solution will show men, women, girls, and boys alike what female athletes can achieve. In conclusion, history has shown time and time again a gender bias in the sporting community and sports media. The solutions proposed will not only address the problems at hand, but will change the lives of females who are not only athletes, but females involved in every aspect of the workforce. And then we're excited. Thank you. Okay. So number one, how did your research question evolve as you moved through the process? And did your research go in a different direction than you had planned, or did it work out the way you thought it would? So my question, my question evolved because I wanted to include a lot more of like the world rather than just the United States. But as I started researching, I found that the United States actually has a lot more like problems and within itself rather than having to cover the entire world because that would create a lot more, or that would create a lot more research. And then um, it went in a different way um, because again, like I wanted to do the entire world because there are a lot of problems, especially in underdeveloped countries, unlike the United States, but the United States being a developed country has its own problems and um, using the United States problems was enough research in itself. Gotcha. Okay. And then question number two, if you had more time, what additional research would you conduct related to this issue? Um, so additional research that I would conduct is more about larger corporations such as the NCAA or SEC and how they feel or what they're doing. For example, um, Vanderbilt had a, um, a, a woman, um, I think she was a field goal kicker or um, something like that, and I wish if I had more time then I would um, cover more about lar like those large corporations and what they're doing to battle um, a gender bias in their sports. Thank you.